Hey all, this is uh, Foy B back with you once again. Now, uh, anyone who knows me knows that I hate pagan parallels, right? I just hate them, right? So, I'm going to be dealing with this person whose name is Skeptic TikTok. If he wants to respond to me, he's well in his uh, right to do so. But, I, I think calling out bullshit, if it's bullshit, is perfectly fine on both sides. So let's go and uh, deal with this piece of crap. Hey everyone, so let's see if you can identify the famous religious story that I'm about to tell. Stop me if you've heard this story before. A divine being looks down on the world and sees that there is much pain and suffering in it. So he decides to descend into the mortal plane as a physical incarnation. So he beams himself into the womb of a woman so that she conceives without sexual union. But an evil king has been warned that a child will be born that will take his throne, and he goes on a violent rampage. The young divine lord must then be shuttled away from the evil king who would do him harm. Can anyone tell me this story? I'm sure all of you right now are like, oh, oh, skeptic talk, I know, I know. It's December, so it must be the nativity story. Isn't it? Huh? Isn't it? This is the story of the birth of Jesus, isn't it? Wrong. What I just described was the story of the birth of the baby Krishna, a deity who was worshipped thousands of kilometers away from Palestine and who was worshipped hundreds of years before the Christian Gospels were ever even written. Krishna, of course, is said to be the supreme personality of the Godhead by his worshippers. He is an avatar of the great god Vishnu, who descended to Earth over 5,000 years ago. So why am I bringing this up? Right, there are two, there are two problems. Uh, first one, this is, this is, this is a small one. Uh, uh, Krishna was not born a virgin, nor was he had anything to do with a king. He was, nor was his mother a mortal woman, it was a goddess. Uh, so wrong. Um, secondly, no, he wasn't the Supreme Goddess. He's in a pantheon of gods. He's one of the eight avatars of Vishnu. This shows you know very little about the Hindu religion. But let, let, let's deal with the first claim. He was uh, now. This is forgivable because uh, a lot of the stuff that he's talking about was talking about is was done by Godfrey Higgins, and a lot of this stuff has become like you know, common knowledge sort of thing. But none of this existed at the time, because uh, what happened was that uh, Christians invaded and put their religious precepts on there. But again, none of this stuff existed before Jesus did. So, incorrect. Uh, but forgivable, but forgivable. Well, I wanted to make a point about the relative frequency of Immaculate Conception stories in stories about mythic heroes, or in the case of Krishna and Jesus Christ, reported divine incarnations. You see, I have found that some Christians are under the impression that their religion is unique in its teachings of divinity descending into humanity. It is not. In fact, there are a plethora of heroic demigods who are supposedly... Well, the most skeptic, the tips up, they would be correct, because, uh, unlike you, they know what they're talking about. You see, because what they're talking about is the fact that, you, that that God had come in the flesh. It's not where a God is horny and just happened to be a a uh, product of that, or he's just one of many gods that, that happens to be that. It's very specific of what Jesus was fulfilling. And because you know nothing about Judaism, you're posting and, and a very little about comparative religion. And the fact is, is that you're going to prove me right in the next bit. But again, we'll, 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 we'll deal with that when we get there. Conceived by women without man spunk being involved. There is, of course, Perseus of Greek mythology, whose mother was impregnated by Zeus in the form of a golden shower, which is pretty chaste as far as Zeus goes, if you've read a lot of Greek mythology. Perseus wasn't conceived by Golden Shower. Uh, Zeus came to his mother in the form of Golden Shower. Now, he would tend to do this. He would come as a fish, a farmer, but there would be a sexual coupling that happened. Yeah, it might be. he might take weird forms when he does it, but, uh, for example, sometimes he's a ra rainstorm. But there is there is a sexual coupling that happens. It, there, is n it, there is no immaculate conception. And the fact that Immaculate Conception is a Catholic doctrine that which you don't seem to understand is a little bit silly. 
But anyway, we'll, we'll continue. And then there's, of course, Huichi Lapochi of the Aztecs, whose devout chaste mother was knocked up by a pile of feathers. He's, of course, the patron deity of the Aztecs. And Maya, the mother of the Buddha, was supposedly impregnated by a white elephant who came to her in a dream. Interestingly enough, some Christian thinkers have been aware of this ever since the days of the early church. Perhaps the most amusing response to this has been the claim that Satan, yes, the devil himself, was going around in the ancient world planting immaculate conception stories in a bunch of his false, demonically inspired religions so that when the true Messiah appeared, people would brush off the story as derivative of other gods' stories. Diabolical mimicry. What? The Aztecs, the Aztecs, but what? As far as I know, there's no Aztec god that was born without sexual congress. Uh, the, the their gods were all um, products of each other, um, or they were godly created outside of what we consider time. Now they may be created in unconventional ways, but again, it's not really immaculate. Now, is it? Um, Maya is possible, but again, she wasn't unknown to women. This is the problem. Um, is that, yeah, you're right about Maya having a dream, but she was known to women. He, he, the person she reminded of wasn't her first husband. And the fact is, is that it was... It was, it was probably a story about um, the fact that he was having his king come down to him. Whereas what that isn't what's going on in Judaism argued this. Listen to his argument. For, having heard it proclaimed through the prophets that the Christ was to come, and that the ungodly men were to be punished by fire, wicked demons put forward many to be called sons of Jupiter, under the impression that they would be able to produce in men the idea that the things which were said with regard to Christ were mere marvelous tales, like the things which were said by the poets. The devil said that Bacchus was the son of Jupiter, and gave out that he was the discoverer of the wine. And they number wine among his mysteries, and they taught that having been torn in pieces, he ascended into heaven. The devils gave out that Bellerophon, a man born of man himself, ascended to heaven on his horse Pegasus. This is a reference to Jesus riding into town on a donkey, of course. And when the devils heard it said by the prophet Isaiah that he should be born of a virgin and by his own means ascend into heaven. They pretended that Perseus was spoken of. And when again the devils learned that it had been foretold that he should heal every sickness and raise the dead, they produced a scapulus. Wrong. Uh, Justin Martin never said such uh, a thing that, uh, that, that, uh, that Christianity was taken from paganism, nor did it. No, no, did he imply as such? Um, I'm sorry, you're incorrect. It shows that you've never actually read Justin Martyr or have any sort. Of, what you've done is probably taken it from a sketchy website, which didn't do the research either. Um, they what they do is they take Isaiah's passages and don't look at the context of what he was actually saying. Um, because if you actually read what he was saying, he was saying nothing of the sort. But again, we can't say somebody who doesn't who's never read it. Uh, and I'll and I'll leave links to what he actually said. Uh, you can have a look yourself and come to your own conclusion. Again, I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm perfectly right because again, I might be wrong about this. But again, he never said it. Sorry, he ne he never said that uh, Christianity came from paganism. Nor did he blame the devil for there being such a thing. It, it, it just doesn't happen. Uh, I'll leave the dialogue a trifle in which he said such things, in, in which he talks about, I'll say, he, t he talks about, uh, the, the most misquoted is the Jupiter one, uh, which is done basically as a, look, we're like you. That's basically what he's saying there, that there's, there's similarities in that way, that we're like you. The stuff that your God do that our God does as well, but it's not like, oh, well, they're the same. It's just basically, it's basically like saying, don't kill us, because we're not, we're not atheists. That was the thing that was being banded against them. But you're going to make some more mistakes, which I'm going to have to clarify in a minute. It gets better. St. Justin goes on to blame Satan. He blames Satan for the parallels between the Christian Eucharist, or communion, and the sacred meal of Christianity's early first century competitor, the mysterious religion of Mithraism. We don't know a lot about Mithraism, but we know that 
uh, it was practiced in the 4th through 1st century AD, or 1st century through 4th century AD, and that they had a ceremony that was very much like No, they didn't. Um, what they had was, again, we don't know a lot, a lot about them because they were a mystery religion, um, so they didn't. Uh, all we have is iconography. Now, we have found that they did do, so after Christianity did, did it. Now, communion could, does not come from, or um, has any parallel to Mithraism. What it does is it's from Judaism. That's where it took it from. It didn't take it from paganism, nor does it have any sort of tangential through line with it. Um, now, they, they might have been stuff to do with wine, because, again, as you can see there, Mithraized there, killing the ball of the blood might re represent that, but it has nothing to do with, with where the communion comes from. Through Christianity, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. But we'll show that in the next bit. Like communion. Interestingly enough, Followers of the cult of Bacchus, a.k.a. Dionysus, which I men mentioned before, also have a ritual involving bread and wine in which they remember their god. In any case, I wanted to make this... No, they don't. We've got no evidence that they ever did. Uh, there's many, there's many, many uh, uh, versions of Bacchus. Uh, now, they, they might have been wine. I will concede that because he was the god of wine, but bread, no. Um, just no, it's, it's nowhere in teaching that, again, I don't know where you're getting it, well, I do know where you're getting it from, um, but again, it's from a fallacious source, um, th th this is, has no basis in fact, um, there's nothing to do with bread at all, so, um, no. This video, because I just wanted to make a response or kind of a counter-argument to this ridiculous trend I've seen in some Christian apologists where they want to portray the story of Jesus, uh, particularly the birth, uh, conception, conception without sex, and divine descent as unique and vastly different from all other religions. They are wrong, and my hope is that I can equip you, my viewers, with knowledge to the contrary. In any case, I'm out. Answer the questions by questioning the answers later, and oh, don't let those subversive Christians keep you from celebrating the true reason for the season, which is our Lord Mithras slash Addis slash Soul's birthday. This is December 25th, so later. Mithra and Attis weren't born, nor was Soul born on it. Uh, if you look at the, the cult of Soul of Vitus, that came after it. Um, it has nothing to do with the 25th of December. Uh, we got no evidence that Miss Rewards had anything to do with it either. Miss Grass did because it was compared to Christianity because Christianity did come before and, and, and the court of Solvistus and the court of Mithras both adapted to try and tack, tackle Christianity. Atis wasn't born on the 25th of December either. So, again, you said you're equipping your, your viewers with, it, with facts. No, you're not. You're equipping them with something that is fallacious and, and can be shown to be fallacious. Um, and if you want to do a response to this video, please do so. This has been Follow Me, Be It Maniacs, Follow Jesus, Man Control,